Hello everyone, welcome to the fossil preparation blog I'm starting. My name is Zach and I'm going to be talking about the fossils I'm going to be working on today. As you can see here, I've got a piece of shale. This is from the Wheeler Formation found in Dugway uh, out in Utah. Uh, as you can see right here, I have done some previous work on this particular fossil. Um, just in my own kind of backyard kind of stuff and right here too. Um, my methods are kind of crude and now that I have access to some better stuff, I wanted to actually start this blog because I'm finding it difficult to find information on fossil prep out on the internet. It's, it's not, there's not a lot of stuff that I have found and so I figured what we could do is we could talk about together what I'm going to be doing and so I've learned a couple things I'm going to be trying today and we're going to just make this blog a process of things I'm learning and hopefully you'll be able to learn from me and not make the same mistakes I do. So first of all, let me point out a few fossils here. You can't really see them very well, but there is a fossil here, and there are several other fossils in this particular sample as well. And the Wheeler Shale Formation has a lot, a lot of trilobites, and so you can't really see them, but inside the rock all over the place, there are just trilobites, trilobites, trilobites everywhere. So I'm gonna be using this to practice on for a getting the fossils out and then b cleaning them up once they are okay, so here is the workstation uh, you'll see here that i have a, a delta air filter and it you uses the the filter back here plus another internal filter to filter out particles in the air here's the sandblasting machine i'll be using and we're using aluminum oxide uh, 16 grit i believe here's the box that we'll use to contain the specimens while we're working on them. Um, we got the two armholes here, plus the gloves to help protect yourself, because uh, aluminum oxide can cause some problems, especially if you breathe it in, uh, if it gets in your eyes, or it can cause ear irritations, and it can cause problems in your mouth too, if you get it in your mouth. So that's why we have this box here. Plus, the hose comes down into here, which shoots into a bucket that has some water in it that uses to catch the aluminum oxide, plus whatever particle matter is produced using the machines and is powered by the vacuum right under here. This is a stool I'll be sitting on while I'm working on it. Plus anything else that is managed to get airborne will be filtered out by the filter here. So we wanna make sure that we work safe and sound and that no health problems are caused by working on the fossils. We have here a microscope that we use to look at teeny tiny little details like this trilobite here. Um, I worked on this one a couple weeks ago and I have before and after pictures and I uh, can show you and talk to you about some of the things I learned about the air abrasive tools, the one I was really using for this one. Um, along with the air abrasive tool, which you can see right here, I also have an air pen right here. And we do have an air chisel, which I don't see here at the moment. So the air pen is really useful for removing large amounts of the matrix. It does remove it very, very slowly, but it is more cost effective to use that versus versus using the air abrasive. Without further ado, we're gonna pop this bad boy in there. We're gonna start using the airbrush to, sorry, the air pen to start removing some of the excess matrix and expose the fossils. Um, it does get very loud with all the machines running and I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. I hope you will. Um, I'm gonna be using my headset here that I have plugged in right now. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me and maybe I can do a bit of audio editing and remove some of the background noise. But yeah, all right, let's get underway. All right, so I've got the air pen here. I'm gonna just start using it to start chipping away at some of this matrix here. You can see it does a pretty good job of splitting the shale apart. And this is what it does, it just kind of drag it across the surface. So I'm going to start looking for other trilobite fossils, see if I find any. I'm going to change the format of the video now. I'm going to do a time lapse so that you're not sitting here watching me for, you know, 40 minutes while I do this. So it should only take a couple minutes. Okay, as you can see, I have circled a trilobite fossil right here. It looks like it's just a cephalon or a, a head, for those of you who are not so familiar with the terminology with them. Uh, I'm going to work to try and 
excavate this out of the rock and then I'm going to put it off to the side and save it for later for a further touch up. This is just to get it out of the rock at the moment. So I'm going to move very gently and slowly. And by the way, this is the first time I have done this, so if you're thinking of some master, please, please don't think so. I am just as much of a learner in this process as you are, and I don't know if this little circle method will work. And so I'm going to try my best to get it to work. All right, here we go, guys. Hopefully I can do this. All right. I think I have made a significant groove as far as depth is concerned around the fossil. I'm going to try and pop it up now. I'm going to put a little bit of back pressure with my fingers so that way it doesn't just fly off the rock and I have no idea where it went to. All right. Oh, shoot. It flew off the rock. There's a bit of air current coming out of the rock, out of the pen. All right. Here it is. I found it. Uh, looks like it's slightly damaged, but I'm going to put it off to the side. Hopefully next time we'll be able to do a little bit better. Let's go for this fossil because we know it's here versus wondering if there are fossils. I'm going to see if I can get this out. Again, putting a little pressure on the fossil so it doesn't fly away. And I don't know if that's recommended. That's just what I'm doing. If there's a method that someone else uses to make sure the fossils don't fly away. Go ahead and post about it. I'd love to hear all right, again, we're going to go back to the time lapse. But this rock right here is kind of interesting to me. As you can see, there's a really defined layer right here. I'm going to see if I can pry that open using this air pen, see what we get when we do it. Maybe. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Oh, hey, there's some fossils in here. Drop this piece here. Right there. See that? That's a fossil. Looks like it's just the thorax or the center section of the trilobite. We're going to put that in the little care box off to the side here. All right, so here's a pile of fossils that I'm going to be cleaning up any further. And this big old mess in here is all that's left of the other half of this rock. So we are going to save the other half of this for later because I really want to get to the sandblasting portion. Uh, here's one of the two fossils I pulled up. Let me get the microscope all set up. I'm going to be using a microscope for this. So just Keep in mind that I will probably be able to see some details that you cannot see as I'm using just my phone to record this video. But hopefully you'll be able to get an idea of what I'm doing. I have found that it is best to, instead of just wave the sandblasting thing all over it and kind of just do like a spray paint kind of a thing, that you should stick to a designated area and slowly work away from it. I found that I was damaging that first fossil that I showed you that I said I worked on last time I was in that I didn't record. So hopefully this time we'll be able to avoid that. The machine should be uh, on and ready to go. And... All right, we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna start here. Oh, it's a full trilobite. I'm going to work on exposing the edges of it first, just so I know where it's at. I don't know if you can see it. I think you probably can. I'm making a little move-in indentation to find the edges of it. Now, we have this down at a pretty low PSI, so we hopefully won't be damaging the fossils. So I have a little button that I'm stepping on with my foot. You need to make sure you pump with this machine that we have. You make sure you pump it. Otherwise, you're just going to not have any sand or aluminum oxide coming out after a couple maybe a minute or so.
I found out that 20 PSI is still too much pressure and you're going to be ending up damaging the fossils. On other fossils I was cleaning up that I didn't record, I eventually went down to 5 PSI and I found out that I was able to remove the matrix without damaging the fossil at all and I could keep spraying in the same spot on the fossil for short extended periods of times without damaging the fossil. So make sure you keep that PSI really, really low.